Okay, so welcome to my presentation. My name is Asanga. Uh, so before I start, I just want to tell you that uh, since the last Omnet, like we've been working a lot on Omnet. Quite a lot of uh, uh, work that we have done in Omnet in, in many areas. And this is one of those uh, uh, stuff. We started before last Omnet Summit, but we sort of worked a lot on this. So this is a sort of a, a, a set of models uh, which was developed like contrib uh, be, uh, the contribution was, uh, was from many people. You, you see all the names and I am just, you know, front ending uh, the, the work. So it's about uh, an opportunistic networking uh, simulator. So we call this uh, OPS or in short, we, we call it, we like to call it OOPS. Uh, and uh, so it's, it's, it's about this uh, 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 simulator or the set of models. So my talk first, we will, why we wanted to build this and then a little bit about a small introduction to what opportunistic networks are and then the simulator itself and then the evaluations which we have done. It is like a sort of a validation. Evaluations uh, uh, were done in the context of something else, uh, some other, other work that we did, but we validated the models and then we, uh, so I have used the results from, from those uh, other works that we have uh, uh, done to, to show that, you know, oops, really works. And uh, then a summary of, of uh, the presentation and, and what we want to do for the future. So when you look at the motivation, you see Cisco has said that by 2020, uh, there will be 50 billion devices that are communicating with each other. And we think that, not only us, but a lot of people think that opportunistic networking is a good architecture for the Internet of Things. When you look at the different scenarios that are there, there are many. Emergency, social, uh, social networking, uh, uh, shopping, whatever, exchanging, you know, uh, recycling stuff. So there are a lot of scenarios involved. And generally, most of, a lot of these scenarios have a nature where most of the information is useful at the origin. And then the, the significance of this information sort of decreases when the information spread. So hence, uh, hence the, 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 the use of opportunistic networks. So when you look at using opportunistic networks, one of the important things is how well the information spreads in the network. So to do that, you have many different routing or forwarding or propagation, dissemination, many names to it, but basically spreading information, how do you do it? There are many solutions, many, many proposals. So for example, one of the most widely used ones is epidemic routing. And we have also proposed one called the organic data dissemination. Uh, which we are actively trying to evaluate in OOPS. So that is one of the, the important things, the dissemination protocol. And since we are talking of the IoT, the scale is not like, you know, traditional networks that we just, you know, want to look at. Huge. So Definitely, we require, you know, not test beds, but simulators. So our choice was basically Omnet. So going into opportunistic networks. So let me just briefly go through what opportunistic networks are. So the way you look at networking in the, in, 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 from a perspective of, of opportunistic networking, is that it is all about information. There are people who require or who are interested, who, who, who want certain pieces of information or who, who registers their willingness or intention 
or their liking to, uh, to receive certain information. And then the information sort of is spread to these people. So as, as I said before, value of information is higher around the source in terms of uh, geographic uh, uh, vicinity as well as in terms of time. And another characteristic is that in information, uh, in opportunistic networks, you, you don't think in terms of traditional networks. You think in terms of where information is collected by a node and then carried and given to another user who is interested. And that user, okay, it may be that that particular user is not interested, but that node may be a sort of a, a node that carries this information to the person who requires or has, uh, who wants it. So they have the, the store and forward architecture. And when there is an opportunity to communicate, then the information is given to that particular node uh, who is in the vicinity. So it is basically a delayed delivery of information. And another important aspect of, of opportunistic networks is the use of peer-to-peer -peer communication technologies. So we talk of Bluetooth, uh, 15.4, such technologies. Of course, wireless LAN is also a candidate, of course, uh, with, with the Wi-Fi direct and so on. But Wi-Fi is, is a little too sort of uh, uh, too much for, 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 for opportunistic networks. These are really nice technologies that we could use. Of course, still Wi-Fi direct is a candidate. And so as I said before, an important aspect of opportunistic networking is this dissemination. So as I said, there are many protocols. So it is important that you have the right dissemination or forwarding protocol so that the information can spread to the right people at the right time. So if you look at this scenario, so I just drew something from, uh, from, from uh, uh, what we had uh, done before. Uh, so this is like a, a scenario of a street performer. Let's say, you know, Coldplay decides to <laughs> come and perform uh, in the city. And then a few people like gathers around. And you see here their devices sort, sort of propagate this information to others. And gradually those devices propagate further. And then you see more people coming to, to this little performance. And then at the end, you see a lot of people. So this is how like opportunistic networks work. You have one person who likes this information and says, hey, I like it. And then this gets propagated to others. Uh, some, there are <coughs> some people who may not like Coldplay. So they just you know, ignore and go away. But there are others who would, who would want to come to see this performance. So let's, let me now go into the, the oops, the simulator itself. It's all about models. So I, I don't want to go too much deep, but I listed everything that was, is there. So, but before we go into that, we just wanted to, when we, when we looked at, at the beginning, when we were thinking about building our models, we looked at, of course, the state of the art, what is there. And I, I didn't put the state of the art, but there are some issues with, the, with, with current implementations. They are like focusing on only a certain area or they are obsolete at the moment. So I didn't put uh, uh, any of them, but we basically wanted to have a simulation model, a set of models where uh, all our, our projects, where we could build them and just plug them in. So we have, you know, at the moment, I could give you an example. We have many student projects where they are developing different forwarding propagation protocols. So we want to see, okay, we take epidemic routing out and we plug in spray and wait, for example. So we wanted to have this capability. 
So we wanted to have this pluggable protocol layer architecture with a clear interface so that you could send uh, any, any type of protocol can be plugged in. Of course, we wanted to simulate large scale uh, networks because we talk in terms of the IoT scale. We wanted to have also uh, mobility. You know, one of the important things is mobility. So we want to have, you know, synthetic trace base or hybrid. So last time, that was one of the reasons why also we looked into uh, SWIM, because we wanted to plug also SWIM into, into uh, our models. And then we also started using other trace base models. So these are, you know, the objectives that we looked into. I mean, some of the important ones. Then we said, okay, we looked at it, and then we sort of looked from a, from a pro protocol stack point of view, from an opportunistic node, opportunistic networking node. You have the applications at the top, and then the opportunistic forwarding layer, which could be all these forwarding protocols. And then an adaptation layer, because we weren't sure like what kind of link technology we will use, so there need, needs to be an adaptation so that the, the the opportunistic layer can you know, understand, and then the link technology, which is sort of coupled with the mobility. So this is basically what I was explaining. So the applications generate the data. The forwarding layer does the propagation. The adaptation, as I said, does the adapting between the link layer and the forwarding layer, and then some link technology. So. I just don't want to go into all the details, but we have a couple of applications. You know, the applications that we develop were for specific requirements. Like we had this sort of scenario where we wanted to uh, check different types of traffic generation models. So we had this app which was generating, you know, constant or uniformly distributed or exponential traffic. And there was another app that we just wanted to sort of generate based on information what people like or do not like or is, is neutral. And then in the opportunistic networking uh, forwarding layer rather, you have you know, two things that every protocol has to look at. Because since we have the store and forward, you need to cache data. And then the second part is that you need to be able to know what your neighborhood is and then communicate. It is not like the traditional networks where you're not so much concerned about who you are in your neighborhood. You have an application that wants to communicate. But in opportunistic networks, first you need to know who is in your neighborhood. And there are many forwarding protocols that look at this in, in sort of different ways. They would decide, okay, oh, my neighborhood has changed now, so I select randomly one of these new neighbors and gives them a piece of information. So this is a very simple forwarding protocol. So these are the two key elements that you have to look at. And then we went and implemented many protocols, the epidemic uh, routing protocol, the organic dissemination, uh, the, the ODD model, and also a simple uh, forwarding protocol called the randomized rumor spreading. We, at the moment, we don't have a link adaptation layer as such. It is just a pass-through uh, thing where it just passes the packets up and down. And then we have a link layer which we it's a modeled link layer. We don't use any of the, though our, our model is INET compatible, we don't use any of them because uh, at the moment we use a modeled uh, link layer, which is very simple, but we have the, the stuff we require. Because you know our networks, what we simulate like are sometimes 5,000 nodes and so on. So this is what we are looking at. So we don't want to sort of use a real link layer, and then you have so many events and the simulations will go on forever. So we, we don't want to do that because our focus is somewhere else. Of course, it's not that we don't want to. On a small scale, of course, 
those link layers are valid, uh, very important for us. But for the moment, we have a model link layer that models you know, bandwidth delays, the wireless range, which we achieve through uh, the unit disk graph model, and then also queuing. And of course, we have a very uh, clearly defined extensible uh, interface between the nodes. So this is an example of, of a node model that we sort of in Omnet. Like we have the promote app up there. We At the forwarding layer, we put epidemic. And then we have pass through. And then we have wireless IFC with the bond motion mobility model using the, the San Francisco, the very famous San Francisco uh, taxi trace. So this is basically an example of, of what we do. So we also identified a set of evaluation metrics, which is part of the, 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 simula uh, the models itself. So when you look at opportunistic networks, the traditional metrics that you would look at, for example, bandwidth and so on, or throughput rather, is of course is important, but is has a sort of a lower sort of importance compared to others. For example, in terms of opportunistic networks, you would like to see who liked a certain piece of data and did they really get that piece of data. And then you have to see how well the data is spread in the network because now everyone is carrying data. We don't want a certain part of the network to carry too much data <coughs> while another part just you know idles. And then we have to also think about the delivery time because it is to and forward, delivery ratios. And also we, since we now have mobile nodes, we also have to think about average contact time, the number of contacts, because this matter finally, finally to see is our or my or our propagation protocol working the way that we want it to? Is it working better than epidemic, for example? So we need to know all this. So these are some of the metrics that we uh, use. So for the evaluations, as I said, we, we use OOPS extensively. A lot of us are working on it. Oops, sir. Um, you said you have this link adaption layer, and it's yes. basically b perhaps truth currently. Um, what are things you can imagine could be inside of this layer? Uh, good question. I was also trying to think about it. At the beginning, we had some ideas, and then we put in this layer. Okay. And then later, I was wondering why we had it. <laughs> uh, no, it, it's something like this, you know? You could have networks, two opportunistic nodes, that span another network. So the endpoints will be totally different. So you need to have some sort of translation that you do in the middle, right? So uh, you could think of that way. Or that's a very sort of uh, uh, broader view. But on a, on a sort of a s small scale view, you could think of it as, as like, you know, when you have Bluetooth, you need to have a different adaptation. When you have 15.4, you, you need to have a different adaptation. So that was the main idea we had at the beginning. <laughs> oh, sorry. So uh, this goes. OK, sorry about that. OK, so I was on this slide when this happened. So, uh, so we, as I said, we use <coughs> OOPS extensively in our work. And uh, we do a lot of evaluations of different uh, uh, protocols, uh, the forwarding protocols. And we, we, we wrote a survey of, of uh, uh, OPNETs recently. And in that, we use OOPS very extensively. Like we were changing it regularly to do this, to do that. So this is like, so OOPS is for us like a thing that we are working on extensively and there are many projects, student projects that are currently active. So I will show some results from this one. 
the, 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 the survey that we did and also some other, other sort of evaluations. But when, you, when, you, when we consider the validation to see whether really OOPS is working as it should. So what we did was like when we had this survey, we were not only comparing, uh, we on didn't have only OOPS, but we also looked at other opportunistic networking implementations. Uh, so I have a small slide at the end. So here you see we have a small scenario with 50 nodes using the San Francisco taxi trace where the data is generated every two in two hour intervals and we run for 24 days. And this is the, the scenario specific stuff like we, what we wanted to do was okay in this one is to see the influence of traffic generation models and caching on delay in the context of opportunistic networks. Now when I say opportunistic networks, you, s you know, remember we have the store and forward capability, right? So, so we had different traffic generation models and we looked at data delivery. And this is what you see. This is from, from our work. So you see here, we have different models uh, traffic generation models, constant or exponential uh, or uniform. And then we have different cache sizes. Now you see in this one, you see that ultimately the traffic generation model had no influence. But what had, what, what we saw was that, that the caching policy really had an influence because now we are talking of nodes that cache and when the caches are full, they kick out the, the data. So that has an influence than the generation model. So another thing that we looked at, this is only two that I wanted to show, is the performance of mobility models. So what we did was like we wanted to see how a synthetic model or a trace-based model or a hybrid model, how do they sort of compare in terms of performance in the simulator? Because, you know, as I said, we were writing about simulators, right? So I, I just, you know, uh, got some results out of that. And so we, we sort of configured, we, we had three models that we compared against, but the synthetic model and the hybrid model, we tried to configure as closely as possible to the parameters of the trace mo based model. Because, I mean, you could imagine, we considered that trace base is the closest to reality because it comes from real uh, activity. So you see here, you could see that the trace based model took the longest because it, has, it had so many events so it took the longest to finish. But you could see from that, the random waypoint which we parameterized as closely as possible to the parameters that we got from the San Francisco trace uh, was you know, much faster. But you could see that you know, it is not close to, anywhere close to the trace model. But SWIM was relatively close, okay? So, of course, maybe, I mean, of course, there is always a doubt whether we really use the right parameters, but we tried our best to put, because we, we sort of analyzed this trace, and then we found what are the pause times, the average pause times, and so on, and then configured those. So we saw in that, and one of our, you know, the conclusions was that, you know, of course, trace-based models are really nice because they come from uh, uh, real mobility actions, but of course, traces are hard to come by. This we got from Crawdad has, has you know, this repository has, has a lot of uh, uh, s some mobility traces, but you know, they are limited. So we need to somehow sort of look into our models so that is a point that we want to uh, make there. And then, as I was saying at the beginning, 
So to see is OOPS really doing what it is supposed to do? So in our survey, we looked at three other simulators because there were guys who were running the same scenarios with the one simulator, with the Editon and with NS3. And then we also got comparatively, sim I, I didn't put the results here, but I could say that the, the, they are comparatively close. And so we have a fair idea that you know, our, our model, oops, is relatively close to uh, what the others are uh, doing. So in summary, so what we did was to, to have this you know, modular simulator to evaluate the performance of opnets. So we wanted to have, we, we had this architecture, a node a model architecture where uh, we could plug in different protocols, remove, plug in, and so on. Identified a number of metrics, and we also have made this available at GitHub. And as far as we know, there are other people also using this now. And for the future work, so as I said, we are constantly working on this. We are looking into forwarding protocols. Currently, there are projects for spray and wait, and there is another uh, famous protocol called Profit, and that is also being implemented. And we are looking at applications, user behavior models, mobility models. So we are trying to constantly expand. And there are many people. As I said, you know, I'm just the front end of this. But there are many people who are working. I'm just only presenting this stuff. So here are the references of all the work. And thank you. Thank so. you so much. Uh, <laughs> okay, so we can have a couple of questions. Uh, any questions from the audience? We already have one uh, in the middle. So thanks for the presentation first. Um, I'm curious, you said that, for example, the one simulator you compared your oops against. and like profit, spray and wait epidemic, everything's implemented already in that. So I know it has its flaws, but I'm curious to see what was the point where you said, okay, this is not good enough and we need to do it all over again. So <laughs> Yes, that's a good point. Okay, our our we, we could have used you know, we also in our in our survey we also looked at the drawbacks of all this stuff. Let's take one. One runs on Java. And when you consider the scale, it's impossible to simulate. Because it's, it's you know, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, layers before you, you get something done. So that is, you know, one. And there is also uh, another protocol called, uh, 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 okay, NS3 is, is more or less, nobody works on it, and there is no sort of extensions. And it is also like only certain uh, of those simulators only focus on certain aspects. And this was also true with Omnet, the, the, the existing uh, models. They were focusing on certain aspects and they were like, you know, fine grained in those areas and then the rest of the stuff were built to focus on that. So for us, they were really not very useful. So we looked at them and then we decided we, we should build because we have so many things that we want to do and we want to have this you know architecture where we plug in things so because of that we sort of stuck to doing it in omnet and we are trying to improve it so that we could speed up because we are talking of of uh, iot scale so we want to uh, be as as efficient as possible so we sort of left these others out Yeah, yeah. yeah, thank you for your talk. Uh, I'm a little bit interested or much interested in this topic. Uh, quite specific question maybe. Um, how do you go ahead to select if you're a node, another node in your neighborhood? 
um, like you said, that you have quite an, uh, you have a neighborhood and you select from nodes in your neighborhood one randomly. Yes. Do you require nodes to do a handshake? Because <coughs> I can assume that in as for some kind of mobility that doesn't work. So it is it is basically dependent on the forwarding protocol that you use. So if you take epidemic, mm. it is a unicast protocol. That means you come, to you, you know who your neighbors are, then you have to go handshake with every node and exchange your information. So that's epidemic. So there is also then a class of other protocols which do broadcasting. Mm. So then you don't have this handshake as such. You just so there are many types of uh, forwarding protocols that employ different mechanisms. So I, I mean, I, I don't, didn't talk any, any, th any specific, I only took an example of, of this particular protocol, a simple protocol, but it is uh, depending on the forwarding protocol. So all this adds up to delays. Mm. So you need to evaluate and see how, how uh, you could uh, do this. So th that is, okay, coming to uh, uh, a sort of a related point. So you have, you know, uh, you must first have a, you know, a proper link layer in a small scale to decide how much of delays are involved here. And then we need to feed them into our modeled uh, 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 link layer to, to give this information and then sort of uh, uh, use that. Now I had something, um uh, more specific in mind, imagine okay. if you have a, a you node, you're broadcasting information, let's say with Wi-Fi or something else. Uh -huh. um, maybe it works in the simulator, but have you found out how it would work in reality? Because we, I have struggled a lot with it, uh -huh. <laughs> and we tried to make it run in the simulator. So we broadcast, every node in transmission range receives it, but then how to implement that on a real device. Have you found out how to do that, that others really hear? I mean, except cars. I learned today cars can do it. But for for example, iOS, Android, that's not really easy to implement. Did you, you find mean, out? I, are you talking still in terms of peer to peer? No. Oh, just, <coughs> just. It's not broadcasting. Okay, but in in the context of a of a uh, infrastructure, then of course it is it is what in reality you mean in in. Yeah, it's between nodes without infrastructure because you talk uh, like epidemic spreading between nodes, maybe without infrastructure. Did you? Did okay, you find it, out it depends on the technology that is there. For example, in in uh, in iOS, uh, in Android, you have uh, uh, you could use Bluetooth, of course, mm -hmm. because Bluetooth itself is peer to peer. And then, for example, you could use uh, uh, Wi-Fi Direct, which is also there in Android. But of course, there is a lot of other issues that have to be solved before that. And then iOS has its own uh, uh, technology to do peer-to-peer. -peer. Of course, uh, uh, they, they sort of combine Bluetooth and wireless LAN to, to do, do that. So there are some technologies that, that uh, uh, we could use. Mm -hmm. That is also one thing, good that you brought that point up, like we also want to build a test bed. Mm -hmm. That, that would be an issue, I can yes, <laughs> promise. Yes, absolutely, yes. Yeah. So at the moment, like Jens is, uh, Jens is also part. So I could tell. So that's Anna. Anna is working on a lot of the concepts. Uh, Vishnu is working on OOPS, and Jens is working on OOPS. So we are sort of all the. And there are some students also, uh, who is one student outside who's also working. So we we are sort of looking at that. And Jens was looking at uh, uh, sort of having opportunistic networks on real devices. So he was investigating Bluetooth and, and to see how, how that works. So these are sort of technologies that are still evolving and they are, uh, you know, essentially they are all infrastructure-based yeah. technologies. So for this peer-to-peer, -peer it's quite hard. And every uh, operating system manufacturer has their own uh, way of doing things. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we can keep in touch then because I did yeah. some work with uh, Gunnar Carlsen and uh, Silvia oh. and Olafur. You ah, cited okay. them. Okay. So I, I, yeah. I did some work with them. It's still a little bit challenging, but that's very interesting. Thank okay, you. Okay, good. Yeah, so, sorry. <laughs> I think I overshoot. <laughs> Overshot. Oh, it's on time, actually. We started a little bit five minutes later, so exactly the finished on time. Okay. So let's finally give the, the Usanga one final uh, hands. Thank you. Thank you.